Guys, I'm already busy editing this progress video. So by the time you guys see this video, it'll only have been five days since the last video. Because I did promise if you guys reach 5k likes on the previous, then I would do so. And yeah, it's already at 4.6k in, in only three days. So I'm working on it. Anyways, thank you guys so much for the support. This month, again, it's going to be crazy content. And this episode is definitely going to be a uh, part of that hype as well. But quick recap, last episode we finished a very monumentous goal, which is completing full Inquisitor on the Iron Man. Probably one of less than five irons to have the full set. And uh, I've been loving using Inquisitor, and I can't wait to show you guys more in the future. But enjoy today's video. Nice. It's an okay kill. Decent kill. Up, up, up. Oh! Oh my god! Bro, I, I, oh my, oh my, oh, oh, oh my god, the RNG, dude, we, we are getting it. Holy shit, dude. We actually got the vaults out. Oh, oh my god. Holy shit! That's unbelievable. Holy shit. I can't believe it then. That leaves the pretty much. The coolest orb left. Damn, boys. That's actually insane, dude. That's actually insane. Okay, gotta make sure we don't we don't forget about that. Oh my god. Wow. That's that's absolutely nuts. We went from the body to the orb. Volatile orb. This is incredibly awkward because I have two orbs, but only one staff. The staff is so much more common too so i mean luckily for for us we can do this you know we can we can always swap out and and stuff but i think the staff is like three times more common or something so yeah all right well the first thing i could show you guys is the special so here is the special here emulate fire powerful Spell with 50% improved accuracy, damage scales based upon magic level and can be increased with magic damage boosting equipment. And it's 55% spec. Oh, really? I thought it was 50, so I can't back to back it. But that's alright. But let me just show you guys. This is a max uh, percent damage gear on me. And uh, imbue heart apparently affects it as well. It, is that what it says? Let me double check. Uh, based upon magic level, yes. So it should scale. Let, let's see what the big hit would be. Okay, apparently hard does not. I've been told by a reliable source. 80! Holy shit. That is freaking insane. I, I'm sure I can find some uses for this. I'm sure I could possibly find a use for that. That is the max hit. So basically, uh, if I hit an 80 on the Nightmare Pillar, that, that would be like a 160, I believe. Alright guys, uh, I'm just gonna show off the, what it could do on a pillar at Nightmare. So, the spec uh, is his own spell, so I don't even need to fire anything, you know? Only stuff that modifies damage is uh, my gear, which I have with me anyways, and my base 99 magic. So yeah, I could theoretically hit a 160 on the pillar, so I'm gonna try to get some cool hits to show you guys. Towards the very end of Nightmare on the last pillar phase, I usually have 50% spec. I normally put on claws for it, but honestly, I could just bring this just to uh, spec it at the end. All right, guys, ready? I'm gonna, I'm gonna send a volatile spec. What the hell, dude? 158. Oh my god! I just two shot it. That that shit. Holy shit, bro! 158. Yo, that was close to max. I think no, 80. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was, dude. I was one off max. <laughs> Holy fuck. And alright guys, last spec. Here we go. Big hit please. Oh, big one. 96? Not bad. So the Volatile Staff isn't really worth it for solos in my opinion, just because I can only land one spec per kill. And I think it's better off to have like an extra food or potion or something. But I see a lot of potential to use it in groups. I know it's meta for main accounts using groups because they have spec transfer to keep, you know, their specs high and stuff. And they don't really need SGS specs. But I think on an Iron Man, there's still potential. So whenever I do some group nightmare again, I'll definitely go test it out and let you guys know the results. 
Okay, it's time to set myself a small mini goal. Uh, the best place that I can think about using Volatile Staff on the Iron Man is definitely going to be at Zora. Just because the spec will make the kills faster and stuff. You know, either between this Volatile Spec or Blowpipe. And I don't really need heals that much since I can easily just recharge it uh, at the Nara statue and teleport back anyways. So yeah, I think I have a small goal. We're going to get 100k skills. Also with my uh, weapons full. So that'll give us plenty of time to mess around with the Volatile Staff. So there's this weird glitch with like your character's movement. If you use a special uh, on your Nightmare Staffs like Eldritch or Volatile, your character will get dragged towards the mob. And that only happens if the autocast isn't set. So in the case of me doing Zora, I don't have anything set to autocast because I'm using a trident. Uh, for you know my main DPS and volatile for specking so your character will get dragged But you can stop that from happening by just clicking on the ground or you know equipping to a different weapon quickly So Zora is by far the most popular boss probably for high-level PVMers to bring the volatile staff to Because it directly speeds up every Zora kill you're basically able to do one or two specs per kill and the spec is most likely going to hit on an average of about a 40 on the green face. You're just basically not going to miss. And that's what I've noticed is that most of my specs are always in the 40s. Unfortunately, it does get capped at 50 because every weapon actually gets capped at 50 at Zora. I thought it was only Tebow, but yeah, as you can see, I, I've only ever hit 50 max. But still good, for sure. The times are definitely uh, about a second or two faster because, yeah, the spec just does hit very high consistently. After messing around with the volatile spec a bunch, I found that starting off the kill with the spec is the best overall time to use it. You don't want to spec the red face because I've noticed I splash a lot. The red face is still incredibly tanky. Oh, it is. Hell yeah. We just PB 46. Pog. Um, and of course, I managed to, uh, you know, spec with Volatile, so uh, maybe that made the difference, you know, maybe that made the difference. I'm gonna risk it. I don't think he can hit me from here, so, oof. That was so risky, but I was calculated, you know. Oh my goodness, yes. Okay, that, I'm very happy with that. Uh, that was very fun using the Volatile Nightmare Staff, as far as I know can't use it too many places. I know Zora is number one. That's the place to use for sure. Absolutely certified for that. But yeah, at the very least, even if I don't find too many places to use it, I know I'll be back to Zora at some point. So so whenever we do Zora, we will bring out the, the bad boy that is the Volatile Nightmare Staff. So. Another really good boss that I think the Volatile Staff will be really good at is actually a Dagonoth Rex. So, when it comes to killing Dagonoths in general, the slowest one to kill is definitely Rex. Rex is the bottleneck that basically determines the speed of how fast you do your overall uh, Dagonoth trip or task. So, I think with Volatile, me being able to hit like probably 80s on Rex with it spec wise, I should be able to kill Rex even faster than before, therefore, speeding up the rotation of the three boss spawns and speeding up the overall uh, task. Which is nice, because faster the better, right? And the idea is, if I'm good on prayer, I will just spam Volatile on Rex. When I am short on prayer, I will switch the orbs out to Eldritch and then uh, use Eldritch to get my prayer back. Oh, what is that? Baby, 60. 60, not bad. That's going to definitely speed up the, the Rex kills. We can hit like 87s or something. Yeah, well, maybe not with this exact gear, but like, but like over 80. So I'm, I'm excited to see what else we can do here. Oh, big hit. 79. Oh, that was awesome. But not high enough. We, we, we can go higher. Let's go for that 80, 80, I don't know, 4 or something. That's nice though. 55% just means I can spam Volatile a lot more uh, than Eldritch. Because Eldritch is, I think, 75. So yeah, I'm getting like 30, 40% more uses with Volatile instead of Eldritch. So come on, big hit. Oh my god, what is that? <laughs> oh my god, 85, bro. I think that might have been my max with my current gear. I think I could hit 89 with Ancestral, but we're not bringing that, of course. Damn, bro, 85, bro. That was the fastest Rex kill I've ever done in my life. God damn, let's go. That's the clip of the century. 
Damn, that's insane. Oh, big hit. What is that? 75. Nice. Oh. Oh, 82. There we go, boys. That's what we're talking about, man. That's what... What's up? And it is done. First ever task with the Vault Tile. And um, I actually didn't even use my Eldritch once, but... But it got kind of close, you know? I was almost on my last dose. So I think I'll still keep my Eldritch with me. Just just as precaution, but damn, I I love this Vault Tile stuff, though. I spammed it pretty much every single Rex skill. So, so yeah, it's good stuff, man. Definitely would continue bringing it. It is, it definitely sped up this task for sure, for sure, quite a bit. Oh yeah, I forgot to test the max hit uh, of volatile spec on task. I got all my percent damage gear on me. So yeah, let's hit it real quick. It is 89. Yes, it is 89 on task. Holy crap, that's insane. If I have everything, it is an 89. Damn. It's crazy. Another Mimic, man. I'm getting pretty lucky with these, I think. Here we go. Damn. Uh, 25 wines of Zami. So, before I continue onwards with more progress, I want to talk to you guys, most likely the uh, OG viewers, if you reach this far. So, if you guys didn't know, I do this type of gig full time. So, I spend 50 to 60 hours a week playing the game, streaming the game, and compiling the footage, the planning, and the editing to make these videos. So, if you guys are interested in supporting me financially without actually spending any of your own money, hear me out. For those of you guys that have Amazon Prime, I know a lot of you guys use Amazon Prime, right? To uh, get stuff online conveniently. What you guys may not know is that I also stream on Twitch and Amazon owns Twitch. And there's this thing called Twitch Prime, right? That uh, exists on the Twitch platform. But essentially, if you have Amazon Prime and you're one of those guys that use it every month anyways, you have access to this thing called Twitch Prime. And Twitch Prime is just uh, perks that you can use on Twitch. And one of the perks is actually you can financially support somebody on Twitch every month without incurring any extra costs, completely free. Because a Twitch Prime gets you one free subscription every month. And if you wish to support me financially, you can actually use Twitch Prime on my Twitch channel, which will give me uh, $2.50 a month. And you don't have to pay any extra money. So back to the topic of the new Bloodville spot at the Darkmire place. Uh, I asked you guys what you think is the fastest way. And I think the fastest way from what I've gathered is through the use of the Fury Ring. And then it'll teleport you into the little tunnel that's under Canifis Pub. And by going through a few rooms, you'll be led to a long tunnel that you can just uh, run straight all the way to the mutated uh, Bloodvilles spot and yeah i think that is the overall fastest way it takes like about a minute using fairy ring so not not bad just bring a stamina dose we've done it i think this is the fastest way uh it sure beats the mind though for sure we found it boys so I hunt pets, as you guys know, specific ones I update as I go. But currently, Tangle Root's one of the skilling pets that I'm going for. Because it's nice just to do a farm run, you know, once a day or something. And yeah, I've been doing that a lot the, the past, you know, many, many months. And yeah, I've built up a ton of clips. I never really show you guys this, but I think it's time to start putting some of these out. So some of these clips are a bit older, but don't worry. They don't interact with other content that I do anyway, since it's kind of like a side project. But yeah, I'll show you the, the current journey towards the Tangaroo pet so far. But yeah, I'm going to try to do some tree runs, you know. Low key to get that uh, Tangaroo pet. I'm already 20 mil experience. So his spory is going to be one of the most important farm activities for this Tangaroo operation. Just because the boss itself gives a high chance of getting the pet. And also it drops a bunch of good seeds, tree seeds. And of course the exotic seeds. The biggest one is Kronos. Because that speeds up, you know, the big players like trees and his board itself, redwoods, etc. So they're really, really important. So yeah, I'll be doing his board as soon as it's available. Every time. 
at the early stages of the operation, I was just focusing mostly on regular trees and fruit trees because I just wanted to get a lot of XP while casually going for the pets. Later on though, I do get a more serious and I do work on contracts so I can get some extra seeds like belladonas and mushroom spores because those are insane odds for pet. But yeah, that's later on though. For now, I'm just focusing more on the tree stuff. Wow, right there. 126k freaking farm XP all in one tree run. That took like probably less than 5 minutes. So this is going to be a typical setup for my tree run. So I got uh, 6 regular trees, yew saplings, uh, 6 regular fruit trees, papayas, also cow quad because it's daily. Um, and every 3 days I'll be doing the mahogany trees as well. So let me show you guys my tree run routes. It takes about five to six minutes for me to do. And it's not the most optimal, I'm sure, but it does a good job. So here's a reference for you guys looking to do something like this for yourself. But uh, some of the key things is for my tree runs, I use my house a ton. It's probably not the most optimal because you could technically make like teleport tabs and uh, also basically use spell book swap to teleport directly to places but honestly having the nexus and the jewelry box in your house is more than good enough it just uh, makes everything so much more simpler man being on lunar spell book and having the runes for fertile soil with volcanic ash and also having the runes for resurrects uh, spell and spell book swap of course to use it I usually don't use secondaries, as in payments, to keep my stuff protected because most of the time Ultra Compost will cover the tree's safety, like 90 plus percent of the time. And uh, yeah, just make sure you have all your teleports with you. I, I prefer, of course, tagging everything in the bank, so you have a nice tag for all your uh, tree runs and stuff. 47 million value of you seeds, 202, and magic seeds, 278. They're gonna keep accumulating anyways, but this is what I got. So I'm gonna turn all of these into trees and then yeah, I'll be able to do a constant tree run every day for a while, man. No problem. Alright, so I have converted all my uh, palms I have into saplings. So I'm out. I think I used like a hundred already during my farm run. So yeah, I'm trying to use up the rest. And our farm XP is skyrocketing. All right, so at some point I hit 25 million farm XP. I think I've gained uh, 3 million farm XP so far. Oh, that's sick. I got it. <laughs> that's nice. 29 KC. I can use this as a backup ultra compost just in case if I forget like volcanic ash in my inventory. I do that sometimes. So yeah, having some ultra compost in the bucket will be a nice backup. What? I just got another bombless bucket? Holy shit. 